Hello everyone, welcome to another video. We are returning to our resin series of reviews, I suppose. Uh, today we're not gonna be doing too much about the review process, we're just gonna be unboxing as we just received it. Uh, today we're gonna be looking at Lick Create. Liquid Create, not really sure. Anyway, Lick Create is what we're gonna go with, L-I-Q Create. Um, and this is their direct to cast resin. This company offers several resins tailored to whatever you want, really. Uh, they've got several varieties of tough resin, um, engineering resin, flexible, direct to cast, uh, a bunch of other ones as well. But we're gonna be looking at this. So they sent us over this box and let's talk a little bit about what it does. So we actually reached out to several resins, uh, resin companies rather, and um, this was just the first one that we received so far. We've actually got quite a few more coming down the pipeline. Um, so stay tuned for those videos. They're all direct to cast, uh, except for one of them, I think. But it does relate to jewelry, so we can take a look for that. Anyway, so let's get into the box. They sent us two bottles of 250 gram or a milliliter. And, oh, what else is there? There's some paperwork. Mm, I think that's it. Okay. The rest is just beans. Glad beans. We're not reviewing you. Okay. So, these are the two bottles they sent us. 500 milliliters total. Looks good to me. Uh, they're both the same. Photopolymer resin. 10 to 100 micron, uh, shake well, LCD DLP, direct to cast. Pretty simple. All right, so what we found in the box, uh, we got our receipt. Um, just to be clear though, we reached out to them and they sent this to us as a sample. Uh, they are not sponsoring this video aside from sending us this resin to test for you guys. Uh, what else have we got? We got this little, you know, like rack card thing. And then uh, a product catalog, which is nice to have. Uh, it looks like they've got a whole lineup of their resins, different stuff, different purposes. Uh, something I noticed that I really like about this company in general is that they're very upfront about all the information you really need. Um, now, like personally, I don't need to know what any of this stuff is, like tensile strength, uh, tensile modulus, elongation at break, flexural strength. I don't need to know that, but if you do need to know it, at least you don't have to look very far. That is very, very important. Uh, I noticed I have their uh, thing up on my iPad here. Um, they've actually got the burnout schedule on there. Uh, they have the, the density for how much this stuff weighs. Uh, for those who aren't in, involved too much in the casting process, um, essentially we, we always work off of the wax weight. The wax weight has a density of one. In other words, if the wax weight is one and we're casting in silver, you just simply multiply your wax weight by the density, boom, you get how much how much metal you need exactly, so you can give an accurate quote, and when you're actually casting, figure out how much metal you need. So this resin is designed to be very easily used between all ty different types of printers, uh, MSLA, LCD, DLP. Um, I'm not sure if they make an SLA version, I'll have to double check on that. But the major ones, so so the, the more affordable ones like the, uh, the Photon, the Mars, uh, the, the Frozen, Sonic, they, they all have a very similar type of wavelength, all 405 uh, nanometer wavelength, uh, and it's going to work on our SL1 as well. Their website has a lot of the profiles already listed. You may have to tweak them depending, but we'll get there when I can actually get it into my printer. This has a very high wax content, which in casting terms is really good because wax, as we know, burns out very well. Um, the downside, as I mentioned before, is that it's going to be a little bit trickier to print. They're claiming that it is very high precision printing. Uh, it's very good for, um, you know, relief type design. So like if you've ever printed a, a, or cast a model that has raised lettering inside uh, a design, the lettering tends to always break off because of a little thing called thermal expansion. With higher wax content, you don't have to worry too much about that because the wax doesn't expand as much as some of the polymers involved in the resin printing. But we'll see what happens in the tests. Also on their website, it is strongly advised that you work less than 0.05 millimeter layer heights. 
Uh, naturally, that's pretty normal with jewelry because you're aiming to get the best possible print with the best you know, possible casting afterwards. Uh, so that makes total sense. Um, they're also on their website state that they use, uh, what was it, uh, Prestige Unicast. Um, I don't have any personal experience with that, but as part of our test, we're gonna be using r and Ultra Vest. And um, as per their wax or their burnout schedule, um, it's basically the same as wax. So we're gonna be testing that and we'll see how well it stands up to that burnout process. Uh, in my own tests, we're going to be doing um, some test prints. Uh, one print will be designed to see how well it prints across an entire bed uh, with very, very fine designs. You've seen this in my previous one, the little the balls, uh, hollow balls, the supports of which are 0.2 millimeters thick. So it's going to be a very good test of the printability. If it can't get past that stage, well, then naturally we're going to have to figure out something. Uh, support wise uh, during the printing and we'll see how difficult this stuff is. To date, Bluecast X10 has been our hardest resin to print with. Uh, even today I still have some more. Uh, I'm still trying to get through all of the stuff I have um, and I just noticed there's so many little issues on the bottoms. You know, it just doesn't print hard. So we'll be looking for those kind of issues with this as it does say it's a high wax content similar to X10. That said, X10 always, always, always casts perfectly. It's just getting past that printing stage that's the difficult part. So aside from those balls, we're also going to be printing uh, some heavy objects, something that has, you know, like a quarter inch diameter in jewelry terms, that's big. Uh, we'll also print something that's, mm, you know, full of prongs. So lots of little areas that need to be printed perfectly and be burned out perfectly in the casting. Uh, and then we'll do some more generic stuff as well. So anyway, we're going to be doing a, a variety of tests on this very vigorously, and we'll see how well all of this casts in Sterling. So if you haven't already, please like and subscribe uh, so you can see more of this kind of content. As I mentioned before, we have lots of other resins to come. Uh, we're just waiting for them to arrive. So by the time uh, we're done this test and this the next video is up, hopefully we have those ready to go right away. So if you're interested in seeing our full ranked resin list, we have uh, our YouTube membership program. Uh, and if you get access to that at the lowest tier, so you can see how we rank all of the nine resins so far that we've tested. As I mentioned, we have six more on the way, so that list is gonna be growing even more fairly quickly. So if you need help printing or casting any of those resins that we've listed and the future ones, uh, feel free to take a look at our other membership options where we offer more of a one-on-one -on -one approach to help you guys achieve what you want to achieve. So that's all I have to say about this. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content. Please take a look at our other videos if you want to see more of those other resins. And uh, we will see you guys in the next video.